Rhino, an opinionated framework to build shiny apps the Absalon way with a focus on software engineering practices and development tools to help you build high quality enterprise grade shiny apps at speed. Rhino is packed with all the tools you'll need to build and scale your shiny apps so you don't have to go looking for them when you need them. You can install Rhino straight from your R console using the following command. If you plan to use custom CSS and JS in your app, it is recommended to install Node.js. Doing this will give you access to these functions to simplify your workflow. Additionally, this allows you to use watch equal to true in the build SAS function to get convenient and automatic rebuilds for your SAS code. After the installation, you can create a Rhino style shiny application directly from RStudio by creating a new project and selecting the shiny application using Rhino as the project type. Alternatively, you can do this in your R console using the init function from Rhino. Rhino initiates the directory that you specified with a great file structure that forces you to use the best practices right from the inception. The main source files contain the app directory which is where your application code lives. Dividing your R code sensibly helps in building robust and maintainable applications. Rhino recommends using view directory for shiny modules and related code, the logic directory for application code independent of shiny and the main.r file as the entry point for your application. All your JavaScript code goes into the JS directory with index.js as the entry point. Don't worry about sourcing the JS code in the shiny app yourself because Rhino can do this for you with the help of the build.js function. Rhino encourages the use of SAS code instead of plain CSS to style your shiny app because of its rich features. All your SAS code goes into the styles directory with main.scss as the entry point. Again, don't worry about sourcing the CSS yourself because Rhino can do this for you. All you have to do is call the build SAS function. You can place all your static assets like images, favicons, JS and CSS files in the static directory. The RN files help you to restore the same R package versions when you share your Shiny app. To add a new package dependency, you need to first install the required package. Doing this step will install and place your package inside the RN directory. Now you need to add it to the dependencies.r file. Finally, take a snapshot. Now the rm log file will be updated with the new package so it can be used by others to restore the same package versions. The test directory is where you can add unit tests and end-to-end -end Cypress tests. The infra files rhino yaml file is the configuration file for your rhino app. By default, you will just see the sas key set to node. This tells rhino to use dart sas to build the scss file and this requires you to have node installed and callable from the command line. If you do not wish to install node but still wish to write scss and build it using rhino, you can change this to r and rhino will build the scss code using the rs sas package under the hood. There is an additional optional key legacy entry point that can help you migrate your existing shiny app to a rhino framework gradually. Each of the possible values brings you closer and closer to a Rhino style shiny app and eventually you can remove the legacy entry point completely. It is also noteworthy that Rhino comes pre-configured with GitHub CI for running linting checks and unit tests. Good code architecture is in the heart of Rhino which is achieved by using Box and Shiny modules. Box allows you to write reusable, composable and modular R code. Say we have some functions that we want to use in multiple places. One way to achieve this is by placing them in an R package. But it's too much work for something trivial. Another way is to source the files containing the functions. But there are a few caveats to doing this and Box helps to solve them. We need to add export commands for the functions we wish to export and use. Now we can import them with the help of Box. 
Additionally, we can also import packages and their functions using box. There are six key syntaxes that you need to know to use box effectively. You can import a package or module directly, but note that all the exported functions and objects are accessed using the dollar symbol. If you wish to use all the package functions without the dollar symbol, you can attach them like this. This is same as using the library function. Attaching just the required functions is the recommended way of using box imports. Box allows you to import module or package using alias. This can help in module name clashes. On top of alias imports, you can attach some functions. Finally, you can add local alias to attached functions. Comes handy when working with common function names. Using Shiny modules allows you to encapsulate components of a Shiny app that can be reused multiple times within your app. Even if you don't plan to use the module multiple times, using it helps in writing clean code with isolated UI and server logic, making the code easy to reason. Let's take a trivial example of a Shiny app where we have two identical greetings displayed in the UI. Let's assume that both these outputs have identical logic. Now, if we want to change the underlying logic, we'd have to do the same change twice in the app. In a large app with complex server logic, this can become challenging and hard to keep track of. To rewrite this app using Shiny modules, we need to create two functions, one for the UI and one for the server. The module UI function will return the UI that you need. It can take any parameters that you want to create the UI, but you have to pass the module ID which is used by the ns function to create unique id for all the elements created using this module. The module server function should return the module server and the module server has to contain the module id followed by the shiny server function containing the server logic. Now it's just a matter of calling these functions in the ui and server. Note that the module ui and the module server are connected by passing the same id. Now that the app is modular, we can change the logic in one place and see it get reflected in every instance where we use it. To make the app more structured, we can move this module to another file. Thanks to Box, now we can export this module easily and import it into our main app file. It also makes sense to rename the module UI and module server functions. To use this module in a Rhino framework, you need to move this module file to a sensible location within the app directory. Now we can remove the shiny app function, change the UI function to work as a module UI function, change the server function to work as a module server function and add export commands. That's right, your Rhino shiny app is a giant shiny module. But don't worry, Rhino creates this template for you when you initiate a new Rhino application. Finally, to have good code quality, Rhino is packed with some standard tools to lint your R, SAS and JS code, write unit tests for your R logic and end-to-end -end tests for your Shiny app, have a standardized logging throughout the app, store and retrieve configuration variables for your Shiny app. With all these tools loaded by default, it will be much easier to write good quality code.